right. Well, you've what heard. What is the Palestinian? Well, word? you've heard of Al Fada, haven't you? All right, it's six o'clock. <laughs> We love to start on time and end on time, and so here we are. It is six o'clock. I know it's raining outside, so uh, wow. <laughs> we'll wait, wait a couple of minutes for these people to get acclimated. <laughs> that the grassroots group has met faithfully the first Tuesday of the month. And we've welcomed you if you haven't been here before. Uh, I know that most of you have signed in. How many of you are here for the first time? Wow. Yeah, that's wow. wonderful. Thank you all for coming. That's just wonderful. I want to tell you that on November 4th, we're invited to the Hyatt Regency Hotel to watch the election results. An email blast will be sent to you soon, so hopefully you can make plans to join us. There will probably be a thousand people there. Yeah. There will be a lot of people there, and hopefully it will be a huge celebration. We're doing all we can to get out the voters, and it appears the NPA group is the fastest growing segment of registered voters and these are the undecided voters who, uh, who didn't register as a Democrat or a Republican. So this is where our focus needs to be. That's just for your information. In December, we may or may not have a holiday party, as we have had in the past. But the excitement for me is centered around the fact that Pam Geller is planning to be our guest speaker in January. Yeah. She and possibly Usama Dakdok will be on the stage together. Uh, Usama is a member of the Dennis Baptist Church, and he's trying to get the church for us for that event, which means that it won't be a lot of money out of our pocket. So I've been very fortunate to get fabulous speakers. Uh, Dennis Michael Lynch recently threw his hat in the ring for president. Did you see that? No. Yes, Dennis Michael Lynch. It'll be really interesting to see what happens. I think he was very courageous. He's quite young. But he's got a, a real following, and it may be absolutely fabulous that he's got his hat in the ring. We've also had Trevor Loudon, Jerome Corsi, Oleg Bashian, John Casey, Craig Rucker, and Tom Trento, among other people, come and speak to us. Uh, there are flag waving and candidate sign holdings each Friday between now and Election Day. And our next flag waving is this Friday at the Kissing Statue from 3.30 to 5.30. And afterwards, those who are interested can go to, uh, for some refreshments, to O'Leary's. It's Carol Holland, who teaches classes on the Constitution, who's organized this. And uh, she's not with us tonight because she's teaching a constitutional class. 
Also, Joe Ruders tonight is working the phone bank with the Gulf Coast Republican Women Federated, so this group is engaged elsewhere as well. If you would please stand, we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. And we always say it our way by starting out with, I am an American, and I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you remain standing, uh, Julie, Grady has graciously agreed to, to say the prayer for us this evening. Julie is the chairman of the Outreach Committee of the Republican Executive Committee, and she's a key player in the local scene and has her photo on Facebook with our guest speaker tonight, Valerie Gilroy and Governor Rick Scott. We're very proud to claim Julie as a Sarasota Patriot. Thank you, Julie. If you would please bow your head. Heavenly Father, you are our great and awesome God who keeps your covenant of love with those who love you and keep your commandments. We ask your forgiveness for the times when we have failed to keep those commandments and even doubted your great love. We offer our thanksgiving for the many blessings on our nation and our people. We ask for your guidance guidance in the upcoming election that com competent leaders who respect your command will lead us. We ask for your protection for our military mm -hmm. who are in harm's way and we ask for strength for their families who sacrifice so much for us. Father, we ask for your blessing on our gathering as we meet this evening to learn about a vision to retrain and empower those who are homeless in our community, to give them an opportunity for a better life. And finally, we recall the words of your prophet Jeremiah, who spoke of your love and faithfulness. This is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And we ask God's blessing on the work of our speaker this evening because her ministry is to help those and to give them a future and a hope. Amen. 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 Uh, I asked Valerie three months ago to speak to us tonight, and it was in June that we met the first time at an REC meeting. So much has happened from the time she committed until now that I can't even begin to touch the surface. <laughs> Valerie is in demand by the people she serves, by the community that is rallying around her, and by her significant other and her little doggy. <laughs> she was as spunky at 11 as she is now, and I cannot begin to share my joy over the outcome I've, I've had knowing you. I'm in shock and in awe knowing just part of her story. Valerie is a big success. She's actually as successful as U.S. Steel. I love you, Valerie, for your one big success and for everything you're doing. Never did the country or the county or the city ask the right person to help them work with the homeless. Why not? You've earned a PhD in my mind. Val is not yet 50 years old, but she has lived more, more in her short 40 some years than an entire generation of your family. She has one of the most extraordinary stories ever told in any town of any size. She hitchhiked her way out of Camp Lejeune in North Carolina at the age of 11 in 1977. She described uh, her story in a Florida Keys newspaper. And it is from this newspaper article that she sent me that I am reading uh, her, her highlights. She was raised by members of the Monster Club in Key West and managed to stay alive. 
The Monster Club was the most colorful gay disco at that time. She was a self-described ragamuffin and a scavenger. She learned it doesn't matter who you are or what you are, but how you treat people. Miami started to change about 1980 with the Mario boat lift from Cuba. AIDS and crack entered the scene and our friend here started to use and abuse drugs and her body. There was no children's center back then and her life was living her. She did leave Key West at age 19, took the GE test and passed, GED test and passed. She was strung out on crack for 20 years and busted and eventually prosecuted for prostitution in Orlando in 2002. When her mother died, Val was not allowed to attend the funeral and this was the impetus that stopped her from taking drugs. She returned to Key West and got into a 12-step program and managed to form a 5013C and made two formerly homeless women new homeowners. Val said she learned the difference between my will and God's will and her will doesn't usually work too well. <laughs> Val has been clean and sober for 11 years and her cup runs over and goodness and mercy are following her and will follow her all the days of her life. Mm. Uh, Valerie was, is the founder and president of Trinity Without Borders, which she started in 2006. She was practically bribed to change the name, but she refused to change the name. It is and will remain Trinity Without Borders. She's the operator of Sanctuary of Sarasota. She was awarded a Peace Day Prize in 2014, World Peace Day Prize. She was the secretary of the Sarasota County Commission on the Status of Women. She was secretary of the Newtown Centennial Board of Directors. Uh, the police, Sarasota Police Department gave her an appreciation acknowledgement. She has also served as a board member with the Sarasota County Health Department. She was a former board member with WLRN Public Television and Radio Miami and a former board member of the Monroe County Rural Health Department. Uh, I want to pause for a second here because Pete Tyson, who's recording this, so that people who weren't able to come because they had conflicts will be able to watch the video. 